Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh, and I'm kind of out of the way of my big problem here. So let me just go ahead and start. We're going to talk about solutions and uh, changing between solution concentrations today. And here's our problem. Calculate the mole fraction of a 20% ethanol solution. All right, so here's the thing about the joyousness of solution concentrations. You have to know what the solution concentration uh, units are. Remember that solution concentrations really differ in terms of their units. So you have molarity, which is moles of solute over liters of solution. And you need to know the solute and solution piece, just FYI. There's also molality. I'm hoping this is a little less squeaky. That's moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Remember that molality is really the one that changes what's on the bottom, right? So solution is really pretty much throughout everything else. But molality has solvent instead of solution. And then you have the joyousness of percent, so you could have all kinds of moments here. The percent mass by mass, percent volume by volume, let's do percent mass over mass, which is percent by weight, which in this case, it didn't say percent by mass, but that is usually the assumed moment. It's usually a percent by weight. And that is grams or kilograms, they just have to be the same unit. Grams of solute over grams of solution times 100%. If it was grams of mass over volume, then you just change the units on the bottom to milliliters or liters or something. And if it was volume over volume, then those two volu volume units should match as well. There's mole fraction, which could be the mole fraction of the solute. It could be the mole fraction of the solvent. There's actually two mole fractions. Usually when we say mole fraction, what we mean is the mole fraction of the solute. So that would be the moles of the solute over the moles of the solution. Okay, so all kinds, that's a, just a quick list. There's lots and lots of different concentration values. And they basically change by their units. And every once in a while, they'll change by what's on the bottom, like in molality. So now that we have what mole fraction is, and we know that this is probably 20% by weight, usually it should say something like that, so let's put that in there. By weight or by mass. Oh, I, my weight fell off. Well, you guys get that it's by weight. Okay, then I need to figure out where I am and where I'm going. Okay, so what's nice about this is when I have the 20% by weight, notice that it has the solute on top, and the solution on the bottom. And what I'm going towards, the mole fraction, has solute on top and solution on the bottom. Score! Which means that I don't have to do radical crazy things in order to get from one to the other. Okay, All that I have to do is convert. I need to put the mass, uh, percent by mass, in a way that I can do something with it. And then I just need to convert to moles. Okay, how do I do that? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this in a way that I can understand. So I'm going to write that every time I have 20 grams of the solute, the solute in this case is ethanol, then I have 100 grams of the solution. Okay. What that is, is that's rethinking this idea of making a fraction and then multiplying it by 100. I'm saying if I had 100 on the bottom, how much of the solute would I have? And I would have 20 grams of it, OK? So that makes my life a little bit more easily. In terms of going from uh, grams to moles, if you knew what the formula for ethanol is, which you're going to know because of organic chemistry, and you're going to remember that all is an ending that means that there is an alcohol group on there. An alcohol group is an OH group, right? And F means two carbons, so I mean I have two carbons. Ane here means that they are singly bonded to one another. The all means that I have 
an OH group on one of them. So ethanol looks like this. If I wanted the overall formula for ethanol, then I would get C2H123456. Oh, okay. So I could find the molar mass of ethanol and convert from grams of ethanol to moles of ethanol. That makes life pretty easy. The hard part is that you can't do that for the solution. All right, so it is a little harder than we thought, right? Let's do the molar mass of ethanol here, 2 times 12.01 plus 6.06 .06 plus 16. I did 6.06, .06, that's 6 times 1.01, .01, by the way. I just shortcutted there, I apologize. I got a number like 46.08 grams per mole. Okay, so I know that every time I have 20 grams of ethanol, if I just use the molar mass here and put that molar mass, the number I just calculated on the bottom because that's the number of grams in one mole, if I can remember what ethanol looked like since I just drew it out, Woo! there it is. I keep on putting C6. Apparently, I really want to do six carbons here. Ethanol doesn't have six carbons. It's a bummer. All right. And I'm going to divide that out. And I get a number like 0.434 moles of ethanol. OK, the really hard part here is how am I going to go? I just got the moles of the solute, so my top part is great because mole fraction means that I have to get moles of solute over moles of solution. That is awesome that I got the solute, but the problem is the solution. You don't, you, you can't calculate a molar mass of a solution. That's the problem. So, Let's go, let's di dissect this a little bit, right? So let's think about this. I have 100 grams of solution, right? And I know I have 20 grams of the solute. And I also know that the mass of a solution is equal to the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent, right? So I know that I have 20 grams of ethanol, and I know that I have 100 grams of the solution. The question is, what, how many grams of the solvent do I have, and what is the solvent here, right? Well, if you're going to have an ethanol solution, the likelihood here is if you do not list what the solution solvent is, you assume that it is aqueous. Mm, if I say aqueous ethanol solution, suddenly we know what that solvent is. That's water, folks. And I know how to calculate from grams to moles of water. I just need the molar mass of water. Okay? So if I find x here, I just take 100 minus 20. That means I have 80 grams of water. And how do I go from grams to moles of water? 18.02 grams of water in a mole. Look at that. Ooh, life is so good. That's 4.4395. Oh, wow. I'm really off the thing here. Oh, no, you can still see. No, you can't see that at all. All right. <laughs> I got a little too low. All right. Let's see if I can get this a little more clear. Let's see. Hey. I love it when I can still just make it smaller. And that is 4.44 moles. It's close. All right, so <laughs> divide by 18.02. Awesome, 4.44 moles of solute. And I can do this 
with mass and I know I can actually do it with moles too. So if I want to find out the moles of the solution, all I have to do is add together the moles of the solute plus the moles of the solvent, both of which I can find, right? All right, so moles, moles of solution equals moles of solute plus moles of solvent. And we have 0.434 moles of ethanol. And we just found 4.44 moles of water. Right? And if I add those together, I get something cool. 4.874 4 moles of solution. Now notice I should have, actually I should only have three digits there. Sorry. Hola. I rounded up here. I should have had three digits there too. Sorry. Maybe two digits. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, it's fine. Okay, 4.874 moles of solution. All right, <laughs> after all of this work, let's get to the place where we can actually calculate the mole fraction. All right, here we are. Mole fraction, here we come. And all I need now is this little calculation and a remembrance of what a mole fraction is. All right. So let's just erase this quickly. In terms of what I want, I want moles of solute over moles of solution. That is something I can do. All right. So what are the moles? of the solute. The solute here is ethanol, right? So the moles of the solute are right there, 0.434 moles of ethanol. And what is the moles of the solution? What are the moles of, of the solution? 4.874 moles of solution. And that should give me the mole fraction for the solute. Right? All right. So, what is the mole fraction for this lovely solute now that we're finally here? Oy. 0.434 divided by 4.874, blah, blah, blah. And I got a number like 0.0891. And that's it. Doesn't have units. The moles canceled out. Okay. If I wanted to know how much of the solution was the mole fraction of the sol uh, solvent, I could either put that 4.34 what or 3 whatever it was for the solvent on top of this number. What was that number? 4.4395 was that number. I could put that on top and then divide by the solute. Or I could say that the mole fractions for the solute and the solvent have to equal one. The way I would write that is the mole fractions, because they're fractions, right? If you add the two components of anything together, they have to equal one. So if I wanted to find the mole fraction of the solvent, knowing that this is the mole fraction of the solute, then I would just simply subtract it from one. And that is how you find mole fractions, folks. It was a little bit harder problem than even I thought. Notice that I gave you the density of the solution and it didn't matter at all. And sometimes we do that, just FYI, okay? Until I see you next time and we do some more concentration problems, we intermixing our concentrations and converting between the two. I'll bid you adieu until then.